What net charge does it give us? Uh, plus one. Which is what you'd already decided, so you had already had the correct <coughs> net charge. However, we didn't get the right picture for that. So a type of question that your instructor likes is he likes to say something like, draw arginine at a pH of 5, or draw tryptophan at a pH of 12, or whatever. So this is the type of thought process we have to go through. So we made a lot of progress on that. However, unfortunately, certain of the amino acids are tricky because sometimes it's hard to tell where to protonate or deprotonate. So now we've made some progress on arginine. We figured out where to protonate arginine. We figured out that even though there's three nitrogens, it's this nitrogen here that's the one that you should protonate. And we also need to know why that is. The reason is that there's a resonance form where this has a negative charge, which makes it basic, whereas there's resonance forms that make these nitrogens have positive charges, which would not make them basic. So we need to know which of these nitrogens is the basic one, and we should also know how to explain that using resonance. And we've seen that we have to be very careful when we're drawing arginine to get the exact right number of hydrogens. This is what neutral arginine looks like. Neutral arginine has one hydrogen here, two hydrogens here, and one hydrogen here. That way, all the nitrogens have three bonds. And then, of course, all I'm doing is just, you can just copy this out of the table, but you have to be careful to copy correctly out of the table. And then if you're protonating it, you put in one more hydrogen here and the positive charge. Well, I think we made some good progress at drawing the amino acids and figuring out the net charge. We just had to learn some subtle details here for arginine. So let's move on to another topic, which is calculating the PI, which is something you're pretty sure to have to do on the test. Our first thought process step here now is to imagine that we're starting at a very low pH. It helps as a thought process for many of these amino acid and peptide problems to imagine you're starting at a very low pH. So let's imagine a very low pH. Well, now let's redraw what arginine would look like at a very low pH. Now let's draw what arginine would look like if the pH was very low. All that it means when we say that the pH is very low, it just means that everybody should be protonated. We've already shown this protonated, but now we should protonate this carboxy group as well. And we've already got this group protonated here. And what would be the net charge then at this very low pH? Plus three. No, it's not. It's plus two. Plus two. What do I mean by very low pH then? I mean a pH that's low enough to protonate all the acidic and basic functions. I obviously, I don't mean a ridiculously low pH like negative five or something when weird things would start to happen. I just mean a pH where all of the main acidic functions and basic functions gets protonated. So we want to start by imagining that everybody's protonated, is my point. And now, as a thought process, we're going to start imagining gradually raising the pH. We're going to slowly and gradually raise the pH. Well, if we slowly and gradually raise the pH, eventually one of these functional groups is going to deprotonate. Well, which of these functional groups will deprotonate first as we gradually raise the pH? The carboxy group? Because it has the lowest pKa. That's right. So this is going to be the first to deprotonate. Now, when this deprotonates, it'll look like this. And what would be the new net charge after the pH is high enough to deprotonate this? Plus one. That's right. And how high does the pH have to be to start deprotonating this functional group? At least 2.3. That's right. Well, it has to pass 
the pKa for the reaction which we're going between these two net charges is 2.2. Let's try to be more, more accurate and precise about how to interpret this. If the pH is lower than 2.2, that means that this will be the major species. Mm -hmm. And if the pKa is greater than 2.2, somewhat greater than 2.2, this will be the major species. Now, we're generally going to get some of both of these. There'll be some of both of these. Even if the pH is lower than 2.2, there'll be some of this and some of this, because there's an equilibrium. However, when the pH is lower than 2.2, this is the major species. So this is the one that we focus on. And when the pKa is greater than 2.2, this is the major species. So this is the one we focus on. What about if the pKa was equal to 2.2? Well, if we think very logically about what I just said, we can figure out what happens when the pKa is equal to 2.2. Remember that if the pH is lower than 2.2, this is the major species. There's more of this species than the plus one. And if the pKa is somewhat greater than 2.2, there's more of the plus one species than the plus two. So logically speaking, if the pH is equal to 2.2, there must be equal concentrations of the plus two and the plus one. That turns out to be important for solving problems. Suppose that the instructor asks you, at what pH will the concentrations of the plus one and the plus two species be equal? Well, then the answer would be 2.2. Now let's imagine that we continue to raise the pH when you're ready. So when you say that it's the major species, you mean the molecule that has the plus two net charge? The, the version that has the plus two net charge has a higher concentration than any of the other versions. Generally speaking, all the different versions will exist to some extent in equilibrium with each other. But when the pH is lower than 2.2, the version that has the greatest concentration will be the plus two version. On the other hand, when the pH is somewhat greater than 2.2, then the version that has the greatest concentration will be the plus one version. When the instructor says something like, draw what the molecule looks like at a pH of 5, what they really mean is draw the species that has the highest concentration at a pH of 5. Because in reality, there's usually all the different species in equilibrium with each other. But if the instructor just says, draw these species at a pH of 5, they mean draw the species that's at the greatest concentration. Well, let's continue raising the pH. If we continue raising the pH, eventually one of the other functional groups will deprotonate, which is going to be our next functional group to deprotonate. Because it has a pKa that's lower than its pKa. So now let's adjust the picture again. Now the picture would look like this. We have to lose a hydrogen. And now the net charge would be what? Zero. Right. Now the net charge would be zero. Now what's the pH at which we transition to have mainly, having mainly the plus one form to having mainly the zero form? So is it the pH that we're looking at or the pKa for these? Well, the pKa gives you information about the pH. Okay. What does this tell? So it's true that this, this, that this reaction is governed by a pKa of 2.2. Mm -hmm. But what does that tell us? That tells us that when the pH is less than 2.2, this is the major species. Mm -hmm. And when the pH is greater than 2.2, this is the major species. And when the pH is equal to 2.2, these two species have equal concentrations. Mm -hmm. So I'm labeling these as pKa's because that's what they are, but they give us very helpful information about what happens at different pHs. Remember that the, the pKa is just the negative log of an equilibrium constant for a reaction. This is the, the related to the equilibrium constant for the reaction. Well, that's why I'm writing it above the arrow. This is a reaction whereby the plus two form deprotonates to form the plus one form. Well, its equilibrium constant has a, P, has a negative log of 2.2. As we keep going, it'll be clear how we can use this to solve problems. Suppose then that the pH was seven. What would be the net charge of the major species? 
Now, if the pH were 7, um, that would be between 2.2 and 9.0, right? Mm -hmm. So then the major species would be plus 1. Okay. When would this be the major species if the pH was smaller than 2.2? Remember, this is the end that we get when we have low pHs. This is the end that we get when we get low pHs. So when the pH is lower than 2.2, this is the major species. On the other hand, when the pH is between 2.2 and 9.0, this is the major species. And when the pH is somewhat greater than 9.0, this is the major species. So when the pH is 7, which of these species has the greatest concentration? Right? 